Is Dallas Cowboy. Nishan, first off, congratulations. Welcome to the Dallas Cowboys. What's going through your mind right now? So, uh, I don't even know. I can feel my legs right now. Uh, just happy. I'm more than happy. Uh, my dad's family is originally from Texas. I lost my dad. So, just being able to go to Texas, like, it's amazing. Congratulations, man. So I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, we, we do this months on end, and no disrespect to you, but you definitely weren't very much on our radar. I'm just curious if you've had a connection with the Cowboys, who you've been talking to here, um, just what this process has been like for you as it pertains to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I, I got a chance to speak with um, the defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, and um, the defensive back coach, Al, um, and the talks were, I mean, they were great talks. Uh, we uh, kind of just connected just to see the type of person I was, and I and, uh, didn't really get to talk too much football, but, uh, yeah. Where, uh, where are you at right now? You talk about your family being a part of this uh, or being down from Texas, rather. What, what's the scene like and what's the celebration like for you guys? Uh, right now, it's not even all my family, but the family that I do have here, going crazy. We're home at my mom's house. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. The atmosphere, like, on, we're just, just going crazy right now. They're dancing. I have to actually get away. I have to walk down the street. <laughs> That's great. Which, and you know, you mentioned Dan Quinn. That when we heard your name called. You know what I think about with Dan Quinn is these, you know, these tall cornerbacks. And obviously, you you fit that bill really well. What yes, what um just in general, what is it about your game that that you think appealed to the Cowboys, and what do you think you bring to this team uh, stepping in here? Well, yeah. So uh, just I mean, I'm six four, so it's rare. Uh, I'm an anomaly. So uh, just being able to get my hands out at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and, of course, I mean, we, we know where Dan Quinn comes from. We know what type of defenses he likes. So, uh, 
I just feel like I, I just fit perfectly in that system. So uh, just a blessing to end up um, under Coach Dan Quinn and uh, the Dallas Cowboys. We're talking to Deshaun Wright, newest draft pick for the Dallas Cowboys here on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com. Deshaun, you talk about fitting into that system. What kind of system did you specifically run during your time at Oregon State, and how do you think that will translate to the pros? Uh, we ran like a, a multi-scheme defense. We ran anywhere from zero to six. So um, just my, my versatility uh, is definitely going to help me. Being able, I played a lot of man coverage at Oregon State, so uh, – I mean, I can do it all, so uh, I feel like I fit anywhere, but Dallas is just the perfect fit. <laughs> now, Sean, I, I've been talking. Go for it. Continue. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut uh, you off there. Yeah, I, I, like, for some reason, I had a gut feeling that I was going to get that call from Dallas, and it, 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 it happened. Uh, I just, I don't know, it just felt right. The situation felt right. Uh, the, coach, the talk I had with Coach Quinn was, was great, so it just felt right. When did you have that conversation with Coach Quinn? Uh, immediately after my pro day, uh, uh, talked to him maybe for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we just kind of connected on a personal level. Uh, he talked about football just a little bit, but more so just the type of kid I was. Well, Nashawn, congratulations on the afternoon and into the evening here. We are excited to have you as a part of the Cowboys, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yes, sir. Hey, welcome back to Texas, man. Congrats. Yeah, absolutely. What's going on, everybody? That was the Nashan Wright interview um, from the fans. Shout out to those guys. You know how they be doing over there. They get to do the talk to these guys right after they got picked, and it's good to hear uh, Nashan getting drafted. Um, <clears throat> just my quick thoughts, right quick. It's another Coach J film day. I appreciate everybody that uh, watched the last video, the Semi Fehoko video i had a real good time with that one he's nice i'm excited about him and now we got nashawn wright who let me just go ahead and say this you know i was i made the video with chauncey goldston and i was like i thought that was a reach never said he wasn't a good player i just felt like the what he was bringing to the table you could have got that later and probably could have got a different edge rusher and still kind of got a chauncey goldston maybe in the sixth round Maybe instead of the other offensive linemen, and then you would have really would have been feeling good, just in my opinion on that. And then with the, with the Nashawn Wright kid, I think he could be eventually could uh, grow into a good player because, you know, when you saw Brandon Browner with the Legion of Boom with Seattle, and even Richard Sherman six three, Brandon Browner was like six four. Those were, those were big guys, and it it changed the way the offenses could really play, especially when they were running that cover one cover three heavily 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 cover three because those cornerbacks cover in quarters and when you have that size you you can really play that ball because you're just guarding that quarters you can go you can play press bail you can guard them close bail out but you're still guarding that quarters with uh possibly a safety over top because you have your two corners going back and then you have your safety going back and that's where you're getting your cover three so you can do a lot, a lot of things, especially when you're tall, because you can see things in front of you and you have that length. You can be opportunistic and get interceptions. You can get turnovers. You can make plays with that. Um, and, you know, you can really swallow those type of receivers. Um, now, he said he played a lot of man coverage at Oregon State, and you see they played uh, cover three there and they played some man concepts. Um, but this video right here is to show that, well, let me preface by saying this before I start anything. Let everybody know that, number one, I'm not the expert in this. Let me go ahead and give you that disclaimer. I'm not the expert in this. I played some football, quite a bit of football. I coached quite a bit, quite a long time. And I did a little bit of scouting. Um, so I know a little bit of the game. So the whole thing of this is to watch this, have a good time, and see where this draft pick fits in with the Dallas Cowboys, especially in the cornerback position. And when I first thought of when I saw Nashawn Rodgers, you see his 2020 stats, 30 tackles, two interceptions, one sack, six game play, real good. Six games play, that's like averaging like five tackles a game, two interceptions in six games is very good. Five interceptions in like 18 games, I believe he played. 18 or 16 games, that's really good. His three interceptions in his first year coming over from junior college, 
um, had, was the first time since 2014 that they had somebody come and lead interceptions like that. So he's definitely what you consider, I would say, a ball hawk, and I think that's why they like him. Um, the positives, let me show you some things that I've seen just from pro football focus, and I don't go everything to buy them, but I like that what they their their in their whatever they do <laughs> their intellect. I like how they 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 break down their stuff. I just want to show this some some things right quick, and they said some pros and cons about him. And I look at a lot of other you know people I like to watch or listen to. I see what their pros and cons say. I have my own thoughts, but I look at what their pros and cons say. And some of this right here, when I saw them, I looked at some of these pros and cons. And I looked at and said, yeah, he does do that. So. Just looking at this right here. Hold on one second. Glitch. Apologize about that. Let's see right here. Get to this tape. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Try to trick me. So I apologize about that little blip it. Had to do a little switch roof, and I know you can't really see the the things of it, but I want you to see this end part, and then we'll go into this video. Just, of course, I'll I'll just read some of the things. These are some of the pros, and these are some of the things that I've seen. Obviously, he's a full six four. He does attack the ball very well. You can see it when he plays, especially if he's the ball's in front of him. He can break on the ball. He's really good with that, and his size, you can really see his size. He looks like a basketball player. He's built like a basketball player. He's going to have to put on weight because physical receivers move him around, and when he gets in the NFL, he's going to have to deal with that. Long strider with adequate long speed downfield. He does that. He can turn and twist. Um, he's not stiff in the hips. Like I said, he's built like a basketball player to me, and that's why you can see him with the herky-jerky moves. You can, he can go with the, the little receivers, the smaller receivers. But the quick, here, here's some of the cons, though, and I've seen this when he's going against this guy I picked uh, for Arizona State, Brandon Ayuk. Um, but takes too long to get going, short area quickness or non-existent, eh, maybe. Um, but here's one of the things I saw right here. Can't guard the second reactions, takes too long takes too long to alter course not particularly effective in press despite wingspan i saw a few of those things when he went against brandon Ayuk, <clears throat> because when i looked at the games in his 20 uh 20 season i watched oregon as you can see right here you can see him at the bottom of the screen There he is, number 21. I watched uh, his 2020 tape against Oregon and then Washington. Um, but I really wanted to watch him against a matchup guy. I wanted to see how it really was with him in a matchup. So I went to his 2019 tape, and I watched him against Washington, Washington State. And I said, who was in the Pac-10 really good last year? Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State. Now, when, you, when I watched <clears throat> right here, uh, Nashawn Wright, he always played up top. Now, I ain't saying nothing, but he always played up top, always. He's always playing up on, on this side of the field. Brandy I played up here today. He didn't do that. He played down here. I'm just saying. I'm not getting on you. I'm just saying it happened. I know it's a zone, and they played a lot of it in this game. You can see it. But it was just very peculiar to me when he was always up here. Brandy and I played against him, and he went came down here. Now, at the end of the game, this is what I love about this tape. Those two go at it at the end of the game, and it's a really good, it's really good matchup. And this is the issues that you may see that he may have to deal with. And this is where you say, man, he maybe got overdrafted a little bit. 
because he has some problems with Brandon Ayuk and the suddenness, the quick second and third steps, uh, the more the suddenness. And even the good thing about it is, though, he's 6'4", and he still was being able to stay with him. So you see, okay, even though Ayuk was getting at him, he was still being able to play with him at 6'4", and there's not a lot of guys that can do that with a guy who's about 5'11", 6' foot, and has that quick suddenness of step, and what like Ayuk does. But let's just chalk the tape. Like I said, I'll be talking too much, but let's just watch the tape so I shut up. <clears throat> See him at the bottom of the screen right here. I like how he puts his hand in the chest to redirect. He should have did it on Brandon Ayuk on one play. He didn't, and that's why I said he got up on him. Um, and you got to be able to play good, disciplined football. But you can see the positives, too. He's very good in zone coverage. You can see how he can break on the ball. You just look at his size. You can tell the difference. You see him right here. <clears throat> I like how he gets right there, his hand and chest. I like how he gets that hand in the chest right there. To read it direct, force him to that sideline. The sideline can be your best friend. <clears throat> right there, and you see on the sideline, you see that size. He turns around. That's where you can, the Richard Sherman would turn around and get those interceptions because you're bigger than him. So when you can turn around, you're morphing him. He can't see you. He can't see that receiver because you're towering over him. As you can see right there, get a little grabby, but you get the picture. He goes again. Breaking on the ball, making a tackle. Right there. Like I said, you can see that size, but he's got to get bigger. They got to get that kid. This they got to get this kid in the weight room for real. You see him at the bottom of the screen right here. And I said, this is what he may be difficult. And they say he said they put him in a lot of man, which they did. They manned him up a lot. Um, but they also, you know, they, they still broke into that cover three, but they did do a lot of man up. Uh, but this is where he may have the issues if he does, if they ever do throw him in man. I think this is where you got this quick slant route right here um, across screen. And I don't know where he, if he's going to be good enough to be able to trail those receivers doing that. Um he has the he has the twitch. He's not stiff in the hips, but that size once again. He's more of a long strider than a quick quick foot guy, and you'll see it right here. And so this is where I wonder if he'll have the issues. I think this is the play right here. Get his hands on him, but boom! See that? I know the ref was right there, but still, you may have to deal. You're gonna have to deal with that in the NFL, and they see you can't really trail like that, and they get you manned up. They're gonna they're gonna solo you and they're gonna get you in that that space. And they're gonna try to take advantage of that. So just some things to keep your eye on. Right there with uh right. See it right here. Come out the screen. There you go again right here. Playing that press. Good coverage. This is a good play. So he gets his hands on him right here. That's what you want him to get physical. You want to get physical right there at the point of attack. And once again, like I said, this is a six four kid being able to stay the receiver. And I, I don't think this guy is like six two or six three. I don't know, but this is a six four kid still being able to stay with you like that. I do like that. Not a lot of not a lot of players can do that, but because he's real linear and slim, he's a definitely a slim fit. He can still make the play on the ball. 
Now I want to show a play right here. Well, this is where he safety was supposed to help him up top, but this is where a one on one right here. I don't know if this is to cover two, but this safety is supposed to give him some more help up top. <clears throat> he gets to the outside of him. He should already should have been going back because he doesn't even give a fake to this running back. So he should already been bailing and giving him help right here. But watch this play. This is what, a little bit what you worry about. But I'm sure he's expecting help. That safety should be dropping back already. loses the location of the ball for the touchdown. That safety should have been back there. He got a free release. He's forced him to the sideline. Safety should have been that back there to help, but he still lost track of the ball. You see right here. And then the good thing about it, he's turned around. He just lost a little bit of side of the ball, but where's that safety at? supposed to be back here but he's got his head turned that's the good thing he has ball awareness but now after he's been beat the receiver has the advantage right here and he can play the ball and as you see he just he just misplaces the ball right here still tries to get the hand up and that's where it helps with that wingspan but not enough to make the play on the ball touchdown yeah, he over there talking to him like, my bad, dog. You know what I'm saying? My bad. Yeah, it is your bad. Because right here, boom. You already late reacting. You already late reacting. Now they're just going over the top. <clears throat> but like I said, even though he got beat, good reco good recovery right here. Still a good enough recovery right here. Um. And I keep on saying that's 6'4 with the recovery being able to do that. That's good. That's He's playing like a little guy right here. Just lo lo loses the tracks or and the side of the ball, but he still had enough makeup ground. And what helps is because he does have that really true 6'4 wingspan, he can get that hand up and still almost affect the play. That's just a really good pass. That's just a really good pass. But now I want to show this little quick matchup before we get up out of here. With him and Ayuka, I've been waiting. All. I was like, come on, man. I want to see him. You know, see, here he is right here. Get that hand on him. He'll get physical with you. Even though he's not a big guy, he'll get physical with you. Now, that's what he'll tackle you. As I said, you saw how many uh, tackles he averaged a game about five, even the year before. Um, he was a, a high tackle guy for a cornerback. I think he had like, you know, so he's a guy that will stick it in there, even though he's not a big kid. Uh, stick it in there. But like I said, get him on a weight program. Get him bigger. If he's and it with, if he gets that weight, I don't know if he can because he's real linear. He's slim like me. So, you know, you really got to concentrate on the food plan and really uh, get him right on the food end. But if you can get him a little bit bulked up without having him lose any of his, um, you know, attributes as far as the, the quickness or the speed because he runs a 4-4. If you don't lose any of that, then I feel a little bit better because, like I said, physical receivers can muscle him and move him out of the way. So let's let's get over to this Brandon Ayuk machine. Run support. Yeah, you want to make that tackle. I want him to make that tackle. I don't know if it's a shoot, but I want him to make that tackle on that play. Get a little better in that run support. Let's get to the nitty gritty of this, of what I really wanted to show you. There he 
is playing that press. Like I said, he'll get his hands on you. But the thing is, even with that, how physical he can get, he has doesn't have that second, second sudden step, and that's where those receivers can get them, and that's where you can see right here. And then he'll get to grabbing, and uh, you know they're gonna call that in the league. See, they're gonna call that. See that quick suddenness. Say it again. I don't want to get to him and I just I match up. Okay, here we go. This is this is the fun stuff right here. I was waiting. I was like, "Come on, man! I hope he goes against Brandon and I this game because I just want to see. I want to see these two compete against each other. I think he's one of the better cornerbacks on the team, and obviously we've seen what Brandon I did. Came in with San Francisco, got like sixty catches, uh, five or six touchdowns was a nice player with San Francisco and the arrow is definitely pointing up with him and he has that quick sudden step especially that second sudden step he ran a 4 or 5 but he plays faster on the field uh, but his moves are like poetry in motion so I want to see these guys compete and this is where we could see it at right here enjoy I I you put some put some moves on him though. Let's see right here. Let's see. Yeah, that's 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 one of them. He got him right here. I think I was trying to see. I think I was trying to see. Can I get him? Can I get him? Let me see. So I think he was. Once I felt like he felt okay, I can kind of get him on on these moves. I'm. A, get me the ball because if you saw the score I think they moved him around to see if they can get exploit a matchup and watch this move right here he does on him that's how you right there mm, he had him that, that quarterback had time I could see him over there he hit him on he hit him with that uh <clears throat> hit him on that corner route See right here. Hit him with that. Uh. Mm. Right there. That cornerback would have seen that. There was that hole. In the zone, there was that hole. You see right that? See that? Now see, I think he's playing. He knows he can get him. Now look at this right here. One on one. I like this. This is what I like to see. But you can see this move that he gets him with this right here. Watch this. Right there, he already got him. He's already beat. Got that hand in his chest too late. Now watch what I does right here. Watch the stop. Uh, you see that quick stop step? Uh, right there. See right there? That's what he's talking about, that stride. If that, if that quarterback sees him, he got him. That's what he may have an issue with. Mm, see that? He may have that issue with that people in the pros. Now, the good thing about it is, like I said, this guy is 6'4", and he can still be able to have a good makeup and catch up with that. But he's going to have to deal with that in the pros, and it's, it's, it's going to be an issue. And right here, they backed up off of him a little bit. Like, yeah, we're going to give you a little bit of space on this one. But 
plays that zone good right there. Plays at the bottom of the screen. Oh. Plays it good right there. Plays it good right there. Although, although he falls, I think he would have been able to stay with that fade pattern on that play. Here's a good play right here. That's what I was talking about. The good, the the good break on break, break up speed on here uh, with Bright, and that's where that size comes into play right there as well. And that's where he's really good in that zone. Let's see it again. Let's see the play right there. Now. Now watch this play right here. So you get that hand into him. But he wants to get him to the outside so that sideline can be his friend. Okay, he's already beat him to the inside. And you see that leg? See where his inside leg is and see where that, that left leg is? And you see where his left leg is? He's driving into that now. He got too late and putting that hand inside of him. He's forcing and stressing him to the inside. He really want to have him to the outside because if he's to the outside, he can use that sideline. His friend, that safety, they're stressing both of these safeties. That's why they're doing more vertical routes to stress and make a decision for this free safety what he's going to do. Okay, so they're stressing it now. And watch this play. Now, the good thing about this is, like I said, this dude is 6'4". He ain't like 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 These those corners like that because you love those type of corners. 5'11", 200, can run a 4'4". That's an optimal. He's got long arms because, number one, he can't body you. Number two, you're still tall enough and you have long arms. So that's what you really want. They got enamored with these tall corners because of the tall receivers, but now they're drafting short receivers and they're, to counteract these tall corners. So it's a good and a bad. It's a chess game right now, but right here, this is where you see it got him. But look at this. Gets beat, but this is what I want to I want to give him his props. This is where I want to give him his props. This guy is 6'4". This guy is 6'4". Uh, Should have had him, but he, he was beat. But look at that. There's not a lot of guys that are 6'4 that can stay and do that. And that's what you get excited that, okay, you can work with him. You can work with him. And he's not afraid of a challenge. I, I was worried about him. I thought he was afraid of the challenge earlier. I moved down to where he was at. He still pressed him and then back off. You seen the catch right here. You're going to see what happens to him later on in this because he does his one move on him. It was, it was critical. But you see the play right here. This is a good play. But he's going to have to deal with that in the NFL, and that's what the, the worry is because I don't know if he's ready for that. I don't know if he's ready for that kind of work, that kind of play. right here they isolated that linebacker they knew so he's got to come in there and make that play but I want to show you this move right here I don't know if it's right is it right here no it's, I think it's right after this this is this is nice guy you you got right right down here. I think this is it right here. Yeah. That that right there. This right here. Watch this move, but I'm going to give Wright the props 
because he was able to stay with that. He still could have got hit on the touchdown if the quarterback, I didn't see what he did if he had enough time. But those in and outs he gave him, he had him spinning like a, a ballerina on that play. But he still was able to be around him and be in them arms, that length, it was able to recover. And he that's where you say he's not stiff in the hips. But this is just a beautiful play. Uh, by IU, but still a good play, good enough play by Wright to still be able to stay with them after he hit him with them three moves like bam, bam, bam. Uh, 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 uh. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that ain't that ain't that ain't nothing nice what he just did to him. But he was still to stay with him. Uh, 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 uh. But he still was able to able to recover with it. So I got. You know what I mean? So I feel good about him, even though I feel like he was, you know, drafted a little bit higher. You like the potential. And when you look at the team, the team don't have no like. I mean, you got Kelvin Joseph. You got Jordan Lewis. You got Anthony Brown. Those aren't guys that you're like, oh, just going to kill him and, and just going. He ain't going to have a chance to play unless they get a vet. Makes the play right here, unless they get a vet. But and Rashard Robinson, I ain't even saying he making the team, but he's suspended. You know what I mean? They don't really got no players. Um, and then you got the other kid that they drafted, but he probably they're talking about him with safety. Are they gonna move Rashard Robinson back to corner? So the cornerbacks are still lacking as far as the experience. So he can come in and immediately play. But when he's coming in and immediately play, he's gonna deal with some stress, and when he's gonna deal with some receivers like Brandon Ayuk. And there's a lot better players than Brandon Ayuk in the league. And he's going to be able to deal with, have to deal with that. And if you're drafted in the third round, it's going to be a lot of pressure on you to play because it's not like there's a lot of guys in front of you that you can just go ahead and say, well, he, his spot, you know, is guaranteed right now. Um, we have to see. And it's still Diggs his second year. And Brown and Jordan Lewis have been up and down. As you see these plays right here. He's gonna get. He's gonna. He's gonna get a little bit of business right here. And I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna show that. Look, he got a little bit of business right here. The one on one right here. Here you go. Are you gonna do the skinny post? Or are you gonna hit me with the corner? He got a guess right on here. He guess a little bit too late, but still was able to be there just a hair too late. Watch out. Okay, he's gonna. Is he guessing right? Is he guessing wrong? Hits him with a uh, quick skinny post, but good reaction. Good reaction, but he already let that ball go. Good reaction to break on it. This is just a good play. Just a hair too late. Just a hair too late. Just a hair too late. Touchdown. I ain't hating on this kid, though. And Lord, you heard me say it one time. I hope oh, my guy doesn't say, hey, yeah, you got it. Say it hating too much. I ain't even saying that. But, uh, as far as the potential with this kid, it's a lot of potential with this kid. It's a lot of potential with this kid. I mean, as you can see, if an inside view, just barely missed the play. Just barely missed the play. So there's a lot of potential, especially with that size, and you don't see a lot of limber guys like that. Just barely missed it. He just barely missed it. So it's a good play by them. Um, but I, I, I like a lot of uh, the positives um, with Wright. I like a lot of things that are going on with Wright, and I think he could, uh, you know, eventually, um, you know, I wonder about this year. Uh, you know, it's going to put a lot of pressure on him. He's a third-round pick, put a lot of pressure on him to play right now. And I don't know if he's ready for that. I don't know if he's ready for that fire because that was 2019, and he definitely did play better in 2020. That was a 2019 tape against Arizona State, and he definitely got better in his next year. But I don't know if he's ready for that NFL stress what them receivers going to do to you because you're getting thrown in the fire because you don't have a lot of guys ahead of you on the depth chart. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of going to see with that. Um, you know, I, that's where I think where people are going to say, well, maybe he was a little bit overdrafted with that part. That part, um, and, and maybe, you know, you, 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 you wonder – if, it, if it's going to be something down the line, if is he going to play early? Is he going to make a difference? I mean, what's really going to happen with this kid? So, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, but that's a Coach J film day. And actually, this dude is the, one of the biggest reaches, but he got the longest tape. That's kind of crazy. So, hey, check out the tape. 
Tell me how you liked it. Another Coach J film day. Big game, James. You know how we do. Make sure you continue to support. Check us out. Become a subscriber. Become a member as low as the dollar ninety nine. And uh, let's continue to do this. I don't know who's going to be next, but stay tuned. You know how we do. I'm out. Peace.